Hey everybody, it's Darcy. Hope you're having a great day. So the last eight months I've actually gone back to school at the university here in London to take art classes and I learned a lot of neat things that I was doing wrong and new techniques and stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to what I can produce hopefully on videos going forward. Uh, what we're going to do today is something called a contour drawing. And you know what? I didn't even know these things existed um, ever until this year and it's actually quite common but I didn't know there was a process behind it. Uh, the basics behind the contour drawing is quite simple. You just draw something. It has to be something. It can't be from your imagination. Um, you're, you're literally looking at something and drawing it and it's all line work. Uh, there's no shading and you're just basically drawing what you can see on a flat surface. Uh, I'm going to show you a famous example from Picasso coming up right here just to show you what it would look like. So this is a Picasso and it's called uh, Igor Stravinsky from the 1920s and this is a contour drawing and if you look at it this is almost a perfect example of what I'm going to try and do. There's no shading whatsoever. He, uh, when he drew this gentleman, he just kind of drew the lines out of what he saw. But what you can see is just how kind of, well, if I said weird or out of proportion it does seem. For example, if you look at the face, he's got uh, two spectacles which are completely different in size. He's got a big honking nose. And then if you go down, you can see he's got those big baseball mitt hands. And then if you, the other thing too is when you're doing this kind of drawing, if you look at the legs, you can see, see how it's just a bunch of lines and you can't see any depth there. So this is what we're going to try and uh, replicate today, except we're going to do a boat. Uh, so here goes nothing. Hey, so it's a pretty easy process. Uh, in this example, I'm going to take a boat and I'm going to break it into two sections. The first one is just getting the line work down the overall outlines and then we're going to stop and I'm going to show you how kind of awkward it looks and because this is sort of a, an awkward process when you first look at it uh, but then we're going to go into the second stage where we are just going to start adding more detail and then you'll see the difference of a comparison between the first stage and the end result which is actually kind of neat so anyway here we go and uh, yeah Okay, so this picture, just as a reference, just so you know, I just pulled a boat off a, uh, the internet. And it was uh, just sort of a stock photo that you had free access to. And it's a Boston trawler. You can see it, this is the initial stages where I'm just basically outlining everything. I'm picking the, the major lines that create the shape of the boat. Uh, it's funny because as human beings, and this is going to sound stupid, but it's, it really helps in this. Uh, we know that a large post sticking out of a boat is most generally a mast. So when you're doing line work of something like that, your mind tells you it's a mast, so you don't have to think about it as much as you might want to. The simple hull, there was a lot of uh, weathering at the end, which I'm going to address later. You can see right there, even though I don't have the water in the picture, I just added a couple lines which signify water. And you know what, again, going back to what your mind knows, boats are always on water, so a couple squiggly lines is going to represent the water. So there's the first run. And again, very plain. The one part I'm going to point out the most is, if you look at the bow, the front of the boat on the left, that's quite an awkward shape. It's hard to even tell could be sitting on an iceberg or a tripod on an iceberg but I'm going to address that with more detail work so here we go in the second phase now the one thing you can do with this is even though you can't do shading what you can do is have different uh, nib uh, sizes so for example the very small details for for example uh, line fishing line uh, cracks and crevices you can actually use a smaller nib with a finer point because if there are for example fishing line well you don't want it to stick out that much but you want to do give the impression that it is there so there I am just doing the the line work adding the extra beams in again I'm just looking at my picture and adding things that I missed the first time through some of the minor items but what's happening is it's really making this picture pop and it's coming more and more like a boat 
Now here's the iceberg I was telling you about. Essentially, if you looked at the picture, it was a bunch of flattened sh panel sheets that were riveted together to create this uh, semi-smooth semi construct. So that's what I did to replicate it. Um, the, the one thing here you can tell too is as I'm adding the cracks and crevices, um, I'm making the planks a little bit deeper um, just by adding another line. Again, I'm not shadowing though because normally what would really help there I think is if I put some shadowing in it. The windows, well we all know what windows are, but wouldn't you really like to take some something dark and, and blacken those out a bit because that signifies that that is inside the window, much like we see in many things. Adding on some drawing, some lines, some chords, again not thinking about this and having to create the images in my mind to put them on there. This is actually from the live picture that I was taking this from. Adding a little bit more detail. I don't even know what some of these things are that I'm putting in there, but I am just replicating what I see. There's the back tire. Um, I don't know what those... Uh, little clippy things are on the side. I don't know if that's an official word, clippy things, but I added them because they were there. Now here's the back of this boat was really weathered with rust and everything. So those squiggly lines, what looks like maybe paint chips or something, that's just a lot of the weathering. It was weird because in the picture, the weathering wasn't at the front of the boat. It was just strictly at the back. So again, that's why I just did the back. It's, it's important you stay true to form when you're doing this process. So there's the final result. Um, I was pretty happy with it. Again, it kind of looks awkward, much like Picasso's painting that I showed you earlier. Uh, what we're going to do now, though, is going to put a side-by-side, -side, and here it comes here. So you can see on the left is the original, and on the right is the much more detailed drawing. I suppose you could stop at the first part, and it would still you know, be a boat in your mind, but I wanted to take the extra time and put extra effort into getting the details to make the boat become a little bit better looking in terms of not only detail but authenticity and I think when you add some elements it takes away from the awkwardness. So other than that I hope you have a great day. Um, please subscribe if you can. I hope to get more of these videos out. I've got a lot of neat things I've learned at school coming up and uh, hope you have a great day. Take care of yourselves.